I'd like to welcome you today to our study in the Gospel of Mark. We are right in the middle of Mark chapter 8 and in the questioning the verses that we're going to look at today. Uh, Jesus asked his disciples a question, and it is a question about the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we look into these verses today, we're going to be reminded of the truth that this is a very important question. It was not only a very important question on that day, but it's also a very important question today. And we need to be careful how we answer the question that Jesus asks in these verses. In Mark chapter 8, verses 27 through 30, rather, it says, And Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answereth and saith unto them, Thou art the Christ. And he charged them that they should tell no man of him. So, as we come into these verses, there's a number of observations I want us to make. First of all, we notice the place where they went in verse 27. It says they went to the towns of Caesarea Philippi. That was located 25 miles north of Beth. Beth uh, of Bethesda, it, it was at the foot of Mount Hermon, and uh, it was a area that was built to glorify Rome. Uh, now in the day and age that we live in, Rome's the glory of Rome has faded, but we are reminded of the fact that the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ is eternal, and that at all times, all the honor and all the glory and all the praise should be going to Him. And as they are in this place, we see that Jesus asks His disciples a question about who he is. In verse 27, the question is asked, Whom do men say that I am? And friends, as we look at this today, that's a very important question uh, as to the question of who the Lord Jesus Christ is. And uh, what we confess about the Lord Jesus Christ, what we believe about the Lord Jesus Christ, has eternal consequences. And uh, we're going to see in just a moment that multitudes of people are doomed because they do not confess Christ from the heart. They do not believe that Jesus is who he said he is, that he is the only Redeemer, that he is the Son of God. And as a result of that, friends, it's impossible for a person to be saved if they do not have a proper belief regarding the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only that, but I also want you to understand today that if a person is off regarding their belief of the Lord Jesus Christ and who he is, that they will be off on every other doctrine that is taught in the Word of God. So what we believe about the person of the Lord Jesus Christ is of utmost importance. And here in these verses, Jesus asked his disciples, Whom do men say that I am? Let me just remind you of some verses that scriptures record for us that show us the importance of believing properly about the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself, speaking in John 8 and in verse 24, he says, I said therefore that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. So there we see that Jesus is telling them that it's very important what they believe about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he tells them very clearly here in these verses, if you believe wrong about me, you will die in your sins. There is no other way that you can be saved, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. Jesus had said to his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Then John in 1 John 2.22 says this, Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. So he reminds us here once again um, that anybody who denies the Father and the Son, they are Antichrist regardless of what they will tell you. Then John writing in 1 John chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. So the Bible makes it very clear in these verses that it's very important what a person believes about the Lord Jesus Christ and about who he is. Now, as we come back to Mark chapter 8 today, I want you to notice how this question is answered that Jesus asked. First of all, 
In verse 28, we find that they give the opinions of men. It says, and they answered John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others one of the prophets. So they first of all give the opinions of men. When Jesus says, whom do men say that I am? They give him the opinions of men. They say, well, some say that you're Isaiah. Some say that you're John the Baptist. Some say that you're one of the prophets. Friends, let me say today that it is a very poor answer to give what the opinions of men are regarding the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't look to the opinions of men. We look to the word of God. We look to what God has said in his word. And then we see there also that there's a divinely revealed answer in verse 29. It says, And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answereth and said unto him, Thou art the Christ. That was a divinely appointed answer. That was a divinely revealed answer. That was an answer that, that God himself had given to him as Peter hung around the Lord Jesus Christ, as he listened to him teach, as he listened to him pray. And friends, that is the right answer. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And you know, the sad truth of it is, in the world that we live in, many people never, ever learn that answer. They never learn the truth of that answer. And friends, it's very important how one answers that question and for one to understand that he is the Christ. And this is also, even though we don't see in Mark chapter 8, this is the place and the time where Jesus announces the formation of his church. You can see this by comparing with uh, Mar with Matthew rather chapter 16 and verses 17 and 18. And we see there that Jesus announces the formation of the church and uh, though the words about the church are not found in Mark, nevertheless, we call attention to the fact that this is a fitting place to make such an announcement. Keep in mind they are in Caesarea Philippi, which was built on a rock cliff several hundred feet high. And this huge strata of rock, this Petra, was a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ upon whom the church is built. The Bible says in Mark 16, 18, upon this rock, he's not using the word Petros, which is Peter, that pebble, but upon this rock, Petra, the Lord Jesus Christ, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then we notice as we close today that there's a prohibition given in verse 30. He says, and he charged them that they should tell no man of him. You know, sometimes people may read that verse and say, why in the world would that be the case? Why would, why would Jesus do that? Well, to announce that he was the Messiah might have caused a political uprising, and Jesus um, had not come for that. That was not his time for that. That was not the will of God at the time. He had come, rather, to seek and to save that which was lost, and he had come to give his life as a ransom for many. And the next time he comes, he will come as the Messiah. He will come as that King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Friends, let me ask you the question today as we close. How have you answered the question, what think ye of Christ? Have you come to the place in your life that you've acknowledged that he is who he said he is, that he is the Son of God, that he is the only one that can bring salvation of sin, and trust in him and him alone for your salvation? Has there been a time and has there been a place in your life that you've done that? If not, I encourage you Get to the Word of God. Find out what God says in His Word about this matter of salvation. Talk to somebody that you trust, somebody that you know has a relationship with God, and ask them how you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are a child of God. The Bible says, These things have I written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life. Friends, it's not a hope so deal. It's not a think so deal. You can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're a child of God. He that hath a son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. For those of you who know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, what have you been doing? To tell other people about the Lord Jesus Christ and about who he is. Let's realize that today that we need to be a messenger for him. Have a great day.